He is, uh, in my opinion, top two greatest Canadian MMA fighters of all time, alongside his longtime friend and teammate, George St. Pierre, one of the greatest to ever do it. Rory McDonald, kind enough to join us. Great to talk to him as always. Rory, my man, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to talk to you. I appreciate this very much. I know it's probably been uh, a couple emotional days for you. And so can I ask you about that? Because it's always interesting when someone retires and then you probably get a flood of nice things said about you, written about you, people reaching out, kind of akin in a weird way to like when someone dies, right? Everyone starts celebrating him. What has it been like for you since you announced Sunday morning-ish that you were going to hang up the gloves and then seeing this outpouring of love that has come your way? It's been amazing. Uh, I didn't really expect that kind of uh, response. Um, it's been it's been really touching just to see so many uh, thousands of people reaching out, texting me, DMing, or just commenting on my post. It's just uh, it's really nice, you know. Uh, I I really didn't expect that, so it's been it's been uh, very touching. Yeah, it's amazing to look at your Instagram post and read all the messages uh, from you know very well-known people and to see the things that they are saying about you and how they respect you and hold you in, in such high regard. Incredible to read. I, I, I'm, I'm maybe asking a tough question here, but I'm just wondering, like, was there a message or two that really stood out that really like, you know, hit you in the heart? Uh, nothing that really stands out right now, no. Um, it's just, it's been a lot and they all, they've all meant a lot to me. Um, so it's really nice. Why did you decide to retire now? Well, it's, it's been on my mind for a while. Um, I feel like it's been, it's been quite a few fights actually where I've questioned it, but just wasn't ready. I felt like, I could still have that resurgence in my career. Um, I, I, I had a goal that I, I was driven to. And I, I know in the practice room, I can I, I could do certain things, but I just wasn't able to do it in the cage when it came time, you know, when, when rubber meets the road, so, so to speak. And uh, unfortunately, it, 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 there's a difference between what you can do in the practice room and uh under those lights and uh i just I, I don't have that certain thing that spirit that heart to go out there and, and get it done anymore and every fight for a while now um it's been diminishing and i've seen it more and more and um this season was kind of my last hurrah to basically I was all in. I was going to put everything I absolutely could into this. And uh, if I was successful, you know, I would just keep going with it and go towards my goals. But if if I fall short, then that, that'll be the end. And uh, this last fight, I mean, even if, even if I had put up a better fight and lost, uh, or even if I had won, just the feeling I had in that fight was confirmation to me that I'm, this isn't for me anymore. It's it's not who I am anymore. So, I I gotta I gotta listen to to that. Could you describe what that feeling is like? Like w even if you win, you say you you know that it's not for you anymore. What does that feeling feel like? Um, just just being in that uh, under those lights and in in face to face with your opponent and not wanting to be there, uh, not wanting to, you know, to push through that, that, um, that intensity that you meet when, when you're in a fight, when you, when someone's trying to attack you and when you feel that, that intensity, you know, usually you have like, uh, some sort of, you know, resistance to that and, you know, mentally, and it's just not there for me anymore. I don't have that passion to keep doing this with a hundred percent of myself anymore. I just, uh, and I think that's, that's confirmation to me that, you know, I'm, I shouldn't be in there doing this anymore. 
Do you remember when you start, first started to feel this way, when you first started to think that the end is coming? Yeah, it was uh, when I fought Musasi. I, I also, that fight, I didn't really, I didn't prepare like I should have prepared, but that was kind of the beginning. I think after the injury I had in the Lima fight and the, the injuries I had from like the, the second Lawler fight, it really like started to play with my head. Um, you know, being, being on that couch for like three months, not being able to walk after the Lima fight, it, it, it just started like, I, I tried to ignore those voices, but you know, your body and your flesh like kind of cries out to you, you know, and I try to ignore it for as long as I can, but subconsciously it's there, you know, you, you can only take so much, uh, punishment over the years. And, uh, I guess there's a, you have to be willing to be able to go through that. And I, I think I just kind of came to my wits end. Uh, I remember after the Fitch fight, you sort of hinted at some of these feelings. I thought you were going to say the Fitch fight. Um, but then you came back obviously, and you have fought plenty of times since. Could you point to that fight, the, the draw as, as a moment as well, because it did seem in the cage, afterwards that you were sort of questioning how much you had left yeah that was for different sort of different reasons um but i was still I, I was still having those similar feelings in the cage of not sure i wanted to be there i was still be i was still able to um push past those voices but um even the neiman gracie fight and a lot, a lot of, it just, it almost got worse and worse from that point on of just not being able to have that comfort level in, in the heat of battle anymore. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. It just kind of seemed to get like more and more pronounced, just that feeling of that I shouldn't be doing this anymore. You said that was for different reasons. Could could you share what those reasons were? Yeah, it was it was just like uh, conflicting thoughts of, with like my faith, becoming a new Christian and things like that. But um, I mean, there were obviously you know uh, those same feelings of of you know what I was talking about before from the Musasi fight and things like that. That, that that was beforehand. So it's just that, you know, there was some additional things there. You know, I'd become family man, married, uh, got a house and became a Christian. Life, life has changed a lot um, when I started fighting in, in Bellator. Um, so at that point, when I fought John, I was just a little bit mixed up. Um, I, th I think I still had more fight in me than I do now. But yeah. Do, do you wish you would have ended the career sooner? Do you regret sticking around? No, no, no. I, I, I think I needed to. I needed to get it right out of my system. And now when I walked out of that cage, obviously I was disappointed getting knocked out, but um, I'm very much at peace with it. You know, I, I know for certain that I don't want to fight anymore. Hmm. And if I would have maybe hung it up before i think i would have probably you know made a i circle back to it and it would have been more uh, more of a drawn out process than it is now i just had to uh i had to you know finish whatever it was um you know and, and, and you know get it out of my system so to speak uh do you wish you had an opportunity to speak in the cage on saturday i know you took off the gloves um, but we didn't hear from you. And obviously after a knockout, sometimes, you know, the broadcast doesn't want to go to that fighter. And I understand completely why were you hoping to have a few words? Like, did you want that moment or do you not care about that? No, not at all. Okay. Um, it, you're the only interview I accepted oh. to, to do post. -treatment. My plan was to just like disappear into the, into the, you know, the darkness <laughs> and just you know fade off into the you know the darkness in my career but 
and disappear into regular life. But, um, you know, we were, we were texting back and forth and I felt like I, I owe it to my fans and, and people to maybe have a final word. And I wouldn't rat, I wouldn't want to do that with anybody, but you. Oh man. So that means you just gave me chills. That, that really means a lot. And, uh, you know, it meant so much to me when you had my back in, in 2016 with all that stuff that went down and I'll never forget it. And, and just, you know, I, you know, I think so highly of you. And so that really, really does uh, mean a lot to me. Thank you for that. Um, obviously people, you know, I have the, the guy right over here and he'll always be on our desk. This is you. You may not, uh, recognize yeah. him. Yeah. That's you from the Lawler fight. People speak of that fight with such love and admiration and reverence. And you said online, you told me way back in the day, greatest moment of your career. Do you still feel that way? Yeah. I mean, that, that fight, like it, it, that was the pinnacle of my career. And because of that fight, I've been able to have a legacy in the sport. I've been able to provide for my family and uh, a future uh, from fighting. If, if I never had that fight, and it was just a so-so fight and I lost the title and I went on the exact same road. I probably would have, wouldn't have made near as much money. Um, that really put me on the, the map I find. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have diehard fans that are lifelong, whether I've had bad performances since then. And, uh, that, that's really a, the staple of my career that, that, that fight with, with Robbie. Uh, so even though it was a loss and even though you took that damage, you still look back like there's no regrets or no like what ifs about that fight. You still look back on it with, with, you know, those kinds of feelings, nothing negative. The only thing I would change is probably like leading up to the fight and preparation, mm. but the fight itself, I mean, it changed my life forever and I'm, I'm forever grateful. What do you mean by preparation? What would you have done differently? I would have took it more serious. You would have taken the title fight more serious. You'd... I was a little immature at 25, and uh, I had, I had, you know, I was doing things I probably shouldn't be doing. But you know, I was, I was going down a a, a bad road at that point in my life, and I, I was, I thought I was invincible at 25 years old. You know, I was you know, fighting in the UFC and winning and had a, my name like pumped up and, you know, I thought I was bigger than what I was. And, but I mean, I'm not making excuses. I just, I think I could have prepared better for the fight. I should have took it more seriously. I should have had a better game plan, a direct uh, plan of action, but I went in there and I said, um, you know what, I'm just going to fight this guy as hard as I can. And that was probably the wrong thing to do wow. against Robbie Lawler. <laughs> Damn, I, I've never heard you say that before about the fight. Does it, does it, like, do you feel like you take that fight seriously? Like you would have, you know, a fight later on in your career. Do you think you'd become UFC champion? No, I, I, I can't say that. I mean, no, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't even have said what I said because uh -huh. it's going to come across as an no. excuse. No, I appreciate I, the honesty. I really, uh, uh, um, you know, Robbie was so sharp that night. And no matter what I brought to him, he uh, he just kept coming forward, and uh, he was an absolute terminator. And uh, he did he did he did awesome. Even in our first fight, I took him down, and uh, I was trying to do ground and pound and do submissions. So uh, I can't say I, I would have won that fight. He beat me twice, fair and square. And, uh, I'm, I'm just grateful for being able to share the cage with, with him. We had some epic times that I'll never forget. Do you care at all that you never got the UFC belt? Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> you know, it's things. That's what I set out for, but you know, um, I, I made a lot of mistakes in, in my youth and, uh, I, had, I have to pay the consequences, but in this next chapter of my life, I've learned so much from, from fighting, from making bad choices and, and reaping the consequences from them that I feel like I'm going to be uh, 
we need better served in my in my in my next chapter of my life because I'm not going to make those same same mistakes. And uh, yeah, it was it was a good a good lesson going forward. Do you want to stick around with MMA? Do you have any interest in still being a part of the sport? Or are you moving on completely? I mean, as far as career uh, things, I, I'm probably going to take a different different avenue. Um, I'll always be a martial artist, so I'm always going to be in the gym training, and uh, that's that's with that's for sure. But as far as me being involved in in mixed martial arts, I don't know. Um, I don't know how involved I'll be. We'll see where the road takes me. Uh, see if my son wants to get involved with it. Hopefully not. <laughs> and, uh, well, and, hopefully uh, not. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I I would have a hard time dealing with my son fighting professionally or co- um, competitively. But if he were, I would definitely be. Uh, I would definitely be there a hundred percent. And and so, do you have any idea what you're going to do now? Uh, probably go down uh, real estate road. Um, I've been really interested in that. I've been doing a lot of uh, researching and planning. So that's kind of the the next step at this point. And just curious about like going off into the darkness and never being heard from again and all that stuff. Why why is that? Like I can understand maybe you don't want to coach a team or run a team or something like but why this sort of idea and it doesn't necessarily surprise me knowing you a little bit and, and kind of how you think, and you never really seem like someone who loved the limelight or anything like that, but why do you just want to disappear? I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I never, like you said, I ne- I never really got into this for recognition or anything. It's, it's very touching. Like all these messages I've been getting, it's unbelievable. I never would have imagined that in my retirement. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I just I just felt like uh, I, I don't I don't really have a lot to say. You know, I I I came into the sport for to achieve something personal. It was a very personal thing for me to get involved in this sport and what I've done in it, and. Uh, I never really thought of getting any attention from it. It wasn't a popular thing when I first started. Um, so and now that it's become like a major, a major sport and, you know, people are paying attention to it. It never really changed for me. I, I don't really, I'm not really interested in what people have to say or getting on TV or anything like that. I guess uh, it just, I don't know. It just wasn't something that I was interested in doing, you know, having a big speech after a fight or, you know, get any recognition. It's just, you know, move on to the next thing and live life. And when you say personal, like the reason why you got into the sport, what do you mean by that? Um, well, uh, my reasoning for the sport was that I was, I was driven to be the world champion. Um, I felt like, God had put that in into my heart that, you know, I could be the best in the world. I could be world champion. And that was, that's what I was, I was set out to do. Unfortunately, I fell short and I feel that it was because of my own mistakes that I'd made. And so I, I own those mistakes. I just have to carry what I've learned through those mistakes and, and, you know, make it better for the next part of life. But you don't, and I don't know everything that happened, you know, to you and, and what the, the mistakes are they you're referring to, but you don't let this beat you up inside, right? Like you don't, you're kind of viewing this as like, I'm going to, you know, do the right things in this next chapter. You don't let this, you know, eat you inside and, 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 and harp on it. Do you? Not at all. Okay, good. I'm, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I mean, obviously it's, it's scary leaving the thing that I've, uh, that's all it's all I've ever known you know I started this when I was 14 years old and I started fighting professionally at 16 completely sold out to to fighting and being world champion at 16 so it's all I've ever known and now I have a family so there's some 
scary it's kind of scary transitioning you know to you know another career but um i'm excited you know there's uh it's a it's a new journey and i'm I'm looking forward to what's in store have you allowed yourself to look back a little bit reminisce a little bit you don't necessarily strike me as that kind of guy but you know i was doing some like i was looking at the the mike guyman fight and condit in um in vancouver obviously was a big deal and then you rebounding and you know, 133, Mike Pyle, 129. Like, have you allowed yourself to look back and smell the roses a little bit the last couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, on my flight back home from, uh, from London, I was, I was sitting in business class, just thinking about my first plane I ever took to a, a professional fight. I think I was fighting in King of the Cage. I was probably 17 years old. And I got flown to New Brunswick. And I remember that feeling. And we were playing, we were in like this tiny little like propeller plane. And it was like the middle of winter, tons of turbulence. And I I was looking out the window at 17, just, you know, so pumped that some, like that I was on a plane. Couldn't believe it. People are flying me to go across the country to go and, and fight for a national title. And I uh, was so, uh, it was a very proud moment for me. And just seeing, uh, you know, I'd, I had made that post about my retirement and I was sitting there and it was, just, it was, it was, it was kind of a cool moment for me to, you know, be on that first flight, you know, to one of my, my beginning fights of my career and to be on that last flight home from, from London, England. Um, in business class, you know, yeah. just seeing how it it kind of all kind of went full circle and it just went so fast. So I definitely, I've definitely been re- reminiscing about my career and all the experiences I've, I've got to experience so much. I'm, I'm so grateful. I've met so many cool people. Um, I've went all over the world because of this career and, uh, I've learned so much about myself. Like I said in that post, it's it's just an un, it's been an unbelievable seventeen years, unbelievable. Can't believe it. It's amazing to see someone retire. Sometimes with retirement, there's sadness, there are tears. You're smiling. Like it, it, I I feel the relief. I feel just the happiness. Like that you could just kind of move on. Is is that a fair way to describe how you're feeling? Absolutely. Um, it's been a it's been a pretty heavy weight on my shoulders. Uh, fighting the last little while so it absolutely is a bit of a relief I felt like when I actually committed to retiring after this fight I felt like it was just a a weight that fell off of me and my heart just felt lighter and uh, obviously uh, like I was saying before I'm, I'm, I'm still you know that this transition is is nerve-wracking you know I have responsibilities I'm not I'm not a single guy I have a family to look after, so um, I plan on doing doing a good job. But that that's always a ner- nervous thing. But I, I feel good about my decision. I feel like there's nothing left in this sport that I need to try to do. I I really gave it all. I invested everything I could into this year in my kind of my final push into it, and it didn't work out. And I'm happy with what I did. I I really. I, I tried my best and I, I can leave with a smile on my face knowing that's what I did. And just to be clear, had you won the tournament, you still would have retired, right? Um, no. Oh. If, if I would have won, kept going. Um, it's just the feeling I had in my last fight was confirmation that, you know, this is not, this is not for me anymore. Okay. Uh, to take yeah. that, uh, that story about being on the plane one step further, I don't think that there's a person on the planet who would argue with the statement that as far as greatest Canadian MMA fighters of all time, it's GSP and then you. Um, And I don't think you would take exception to GSP being up there considering your relationship and what he's accomplished. Second greatest Canadian MMA fighter to ever live is a pretty damn good, you know, spot to, to walk away from. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but that's how I feel. And that's how I think everyone else feels. So Congratulations, man. You uh, you did it all. 
You were an absolute pleasure to cover. Always loved your fights when you'd show up in the suit and get your hands wrapped and, uh, you know, give us the, I mean, you, you were never in boring fights. You were always great with the media. You were always great to cover. You represented this country so well. I hope you'll be staying in Montreal. Are you staying in Montreal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll be here. Great. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you for all the great memories, all the great fights, all the great interviews, all the time that you gave us. And uh, thank you for doing this one last time. Hopefully we'll talk again, but uh, to come on the show after your retirement really meant a lot. And again, thank you for what you did in 2016. You may not think it meant a lot, but it really did the tweets that you sent out. So all the best to you and your family, Rory. Thank you for everything. And congratulations on a legendary Hall of Fame career. You will go into the Hall of Fame. That fight is going in there and you will be in there as well. I have no doubt of it. So all the best, my friend. I, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ariel. All right. Talk to you soon. Roy McDonald, what a great career, legend, uh, and, and such a great honor to have him on the show after his retirement. Uh, really one of my favorites of all time and uh, just an absolute, you know, absolute mensch, absolute legendary Canadian fighter. And, and I put the Canadian part in there because for me, it's important as a Canadian, but <clears throat> it's really not important to the rest of you. He's one of the greatest fighters of all time.